morning to you, our worshiping community. Welcome to the Methodist Church BVI Circuit's Easter Sunday worship. We thank God for all of you under the sound of my voice. Leading our worship today is our Superintendent Minister, the Reverend Dr. Keith B. Lewis. On this Resurrection Sunday, as we reflect, I pray that this time of worship will be a blessing to us and a refreshment to our souls. Be blessed. Must 
just failing The end draws near And my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise Unending Ten thousand years and then forever The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray the prayer of approach. Gracious God, on this day of resurrection, joy and gladness, with your people of all times and places, we bring to you all praise and adoration from the tiniest particles of matter to the unimaginable enmities of space. Your glory fills the universe. We bow before you our creator in awe and wonder today we come together as brothers and sisters to celebrate the good news of easter and to renew our baptism we bless you that you are the god of new creation whose gracious power has always been to bring salvation to the ends of the earth and to renew the whole of your creation through Jesus Christ, your Son. We thank you for your eternal love and power revealed in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. So we pray through your Holy Spirit you will continue to come to us in the power of his risen life. Take away our sin. Roll away the stone of our crippling doubts and fears. Fill us with joy and peace in believing and making us eager like Mary Magdalene to bring the good news of Easter to others that we too may find in Christ pardon and peace, joy and hope through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
We read the Collect together. Lord of life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive. One God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you above all for the light shining in the face of Jesus, the risen Christ. For the immense love he brought to the least and lowest, for the vision of justice he gave to a corrupt world, for the healing with which he touched the diseased and broken. We thank you, Lord, for all the apostles, saints, and martyrs, all who witnessed to your, who witnessed to your son's glorious resurrection names known in the world and names unknown only to you. We thank you for your blessings to us in families, loved ones, and friends, for the opportunities of work and leisure to discern your presence, to follow you and live to your glory. We pray for the work of charities, for those who serve the homeless, the mentally ill, those destroyed by the poison of poverty, Strengthen us in our commitment to help where we can, to feed, clothe, and visit those in need. May we feel for them with the heart of Christ. Sanctify now our gifts, which we place on your altar today, and may your kingdom reign in the lives of those who are blessed by it. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. God, we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you all praise today for who you are. You are the everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. You are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. You're the Great I Am. You're wonderful. You're our Counselor. You're the Rose of Sharon. You're the Lily of the Valley water when we're thirsty your food in a barren land you're a mind fixer heart fixer mind regulator a friend that sticks closer than a brother and we honor you today jesus we thank you for your resurrection power. We thank you for the power that's in the blood that washes us clean. Yes, that power that presents us faultless before his excellent greatness with exceeding joy. Thank you. You've won for us the victory. And we're excited and, and, and glad today that you have overcome death, hell, and the grave. Death couldn't hold you down. You're the risen king. And now you're seated at the right hand of the Father in majesty. So we offer up today the highest praise. Come on, somebody just begin to tell him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 you're worthy, Lord, you're worthy. 
worthy, Lord. You're worthy, so worthy, so wonderful, so faithful, so glorious, so marvelous. You're so true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We offer up the sacrifice of praise. It's the fruit of our lips. Giving you thanks. Blessing your name. Honoring you for who you are. You are king. You are savior. You're our redeemer. You are our healer. You're the great I am. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory.
morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Happy Easter. The Old Testament reading is taken from Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 to 18, and it reads as follows. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast into the sea. His picked officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. You sent out your fury, it consumed them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The flood stood up in a heap. The depths congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. In your steadfast love, you led the people whom you redeemed. You guided them by your strength to your holy abode. The peoples heard, they trembled. Pangs seized the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom were dismayed. Trembling seized the leaders of Moab. All the inhabitants of Canaan melted away. Terror and dread fell upon them. By the might of your arm, they became still as a stone until your people, O Lord, passed by. Until the people whom you acquired passed by. You brought them in and planted them on the mountain of your own possession. The place, O Lord, that you made your abode. The sanctuary, O Lord, that your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Here ends the reading of the word.
Good morning, church. The scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 11. Here beginning the reading. The Resurrection of Christ. Now, I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you were being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, although some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Here ends the scripture reading.
gospel is taken from Mark chapter 16, reading verses 1 through 8. Glory to you, O God. The caption reads, The Resurrection of Jesus. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. We thank you for joining us at this time of Easter and uh, we pray that the spirit of the resurrected Christ becomes the spirit that guides our lives. Today we are privileged again to hear the word of God and we thank those who have shared the written word with us today. Burning hearts, broken bread. Let us pray. As we hear your word today, Lord God, our prayer to you is that we will be filled with your spirit as your earlier disciples, how their heart burned in your presence, how their heart burned as you broke bread with them, may our hearts also burn within us and kindle a flame of sacred fire on the mean altar of our hearts. May the words spoken through my mouth and that meditated upon by all of us as a believing community may be offered to you as a fragrant offering that it may please you the way in which we live our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we recall on the first Easter in the afternoon, two of Jesus' disciples, Cleopas and Annas, well, they are two lesser known people. For when we hear about disciples, they are not even mentioned except for this experience on the road going to the village of Emmaus. But they were on the road talking as they took a walk towards Emmaus the, that fateful Easter afternoon. And we are told that they were still in grief over the death of their hope that this prophet, Jesus of Nazareth, was the one who would save them. They saw him die. And while there were rumors of the resurrection, well, the witnesses were women, and who believed women at the time? It was simply a rumor too good 
to be true. I wonder why it is that we are quick to believe rumors of scandals and tragedy. But we cannot believe good news when we hear it. We live in a time that is described as the information age. And part of the information age is a lot of garbage that passes as information and masquerade itself as truth. We have seen in the past five years persons of repute and position trying to come up with alternative facts and alternative narratives. Basically, parading their opinion and misguided thoughts as truth. So, in the days of Jesus, it was no less. We are told that women had not a position in the society of high repute. So, who would believe a group of women who said that Jesus um, resurrected from the dead? So, this morning, we, we have two followers of Jesus walking down the road together, talking and wondering what they will do with their lives now that hope is gone. The way we have been wrestling and struggling with the challenge posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Many persons have given up on their hope. Many persons have given up on their their dreams and their visions because what was aligned before is put out of kelter. And they do not seemingly see any way how things are going to happen again. Maybe we are just being approved for a loan from, from the bank to, to mortgage building. Maybe a, a job was promised. Maybe a promotion. Maybe someone left one establishment hoping to get a higher salary in another establishment. Maybe it is the promise of starting a family, um, courting and marrying and starting to have babies again. Maybe all of that. Maybe the thoughts and the vision was to migrate to some greener pastors as we often like to do to think that the grass is always greener on the other side. So dashed hopes. So... Cleopas and Annas were walking, going home, and, well, Jesus had died. And all that the, the Savior, the Lord, the teacher had been promising and teaching seemed to be ebbing away. You and I have had those conversations before, haven't we? Walking with a friend, talking about a troubled relationship or a marriage that has failed. Or you've been laid off from work. Or your best friend in the whole world has died. Or you've lost faith in God. These are holy conversations and if we only had the eyes and ears and hearts to recognize it, we would often find Jesus walking and talking with us. So, what are we to do? Are we to just give up in our conversation like Cleopas and Annas? What are we really to do? You may ask, the preacher today. Well, what will the preacher say to us? The preacher will say, hope has not died with the crucifixion of Christ. Hope has not died with Jesus in the tomb. You see, these two friends, these two disciples, they tell they were joined by Jesus on the road, and they tell Jesus what has happened, how their hopes had died, but they were telling Jesus of the resurrection. And Jesus tells them that if they had known the scriptures, so I want you to follow me. 
What happens when we are in crisis? Do we turn in our, on ourselves or do we turn to God? And where is God at that time? God is in his word revealed to us in the scriptures. So Jesus said, if you turn to the scriptures, you will be surprised. When they arrived at the village, they, they were not ready to let Jesus go. They were not sure who he is. But they know they want him to stay. Something about the way he spoke. Something about his presence with them on the road. Makes them urge Jesus to stay with them in Emmaus. There is just something about him. Very much the, the one who sang... There is something about that name. I can't figure it out, but there is something, sister, about that name. There is something about Jesus. It's different. So Jesus stays. And at the table, turning an ordinary meal into a Eucharistic moment. A moment of love. A moment of revelation. Jesus takes the bread. Jesus blesses the bread. Jesus breaks the bread. And Jesus gives it to them. And the scripture said their eyes were open. Hallelujah. And their eyes were opened and they recognized that in their midst, the one in whom they had placed their hope was alive. That is what the table represents. When we come to the table, we come to a holy feast. Where it is not just a reenactment of the past so that we come to the feast with memory. But when we come to the feast, when we come to the table, we come in love. For the scripture says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, here I am in their midst to dwell. So when we come to the table, Jesus is present. He's present in the breaking of the bread. He's present in the blessing of the cup. For we share in the cup of blessedness. Their eyes were opened and they recognize in their midst the one in whom they had placed their hope. So oftentimes when our hopes are dashed, we sometimes run to all kinds of externals, but Jesus taught Annas and Cleopas to turn to the scriptures, and when they turn to the scriptures, they will not be surprised because the scripture says he will rise again. And as soon as they recognized Jesus. The scripture says he vanished from sight. Then as they think back on the day, they recall how during their time with him on the road, their hearts burned within them. My brothers and sisters, it takes special eyes and, and ears to embrace the presence of God. Scripture has to be heard as more than words on a page. The bread and the cup have to be experienced as more than once a month ritual when we come because it's the thing we do. Educated, intellectually oriented congregations tend to make the study of Scripture such a complex exercise. That leaves out the aching heart. Are we not Methodist? Are we not the children of the warm heart movement? Are we not children of Wesley? Who upon entering a worship experience on May 24, 1738. 
as he walked into a Moravian fellowship meeting on Aldous Great Street when he heard the reading from Luther's preface to the book of Romans. It is recorded for us that about quarter before nine, a time, a moment in time, it is said he felt his heart strangely warmed. He was then sure of his salvation. Just as Cleopas and Annas, they, they felt their heart burning within them while the Lord Jesus was present with them. He said, I felt my heart strangely warm. I know now I did trust in God and God alone for my salvation. Wesley moved on to become the leader of this huge world spiritual movement called Methodist. When was the last time your heart burned within you? Sometimes we may be like persons who have been married so long they forgot the day when they first met with palpitated hearts and sweaty palms. They forgot that fuzzy feeling which is the same kind of feeling because we emote at that time. Our brains get shut down. We cannot intellectualize the experience, but there is a certitude about it. That's the one for me. I know that we fell in love the first time I saw you. I know you would be my wife or I know you would be my man. There was something different about you. Yes, guys been after me, and I have been after girls, but when we met, you just know it click. It is the same with Jesus. That you and I should say, he is for us. When have you allowed your mind to descend into your heart and Feel the burning flame of God's spirit within you. Believing, you know, is a matter not of, of the mind, but believing is a matter of the heart. Just like we say about love and romance, that's not a matter of the mind, it's a matter of the heart. You cannot get between lovers. It is their heart's connection. When was the last time you gave your heart the chance to believe in hope and to burn within you a holy fire? Or is our Christian faith just about a ritualistic experience on a Sunday morning and after it we don off our garments and we go our own human way? Have you really been touched by the Spirit? Have you really met and have an experience of that wonder-working power of God in your life that makes you dance, you who couldn't move your feet, that make you shout, you who were soft-spoken, that make you agitate, you who would stand by away from the crowd, that you can say, he touched me, and now I know I'm no longer the same. I have been in the presence of the risen God. What road, my brother or sister, are you traveling on today? Can you recall when you first made that decision to follow Jesus? Was it as a youth group camp? Was it um, at a crusade? Was it at your church's revival service? Was it that you were listening to the radio? or watching something on the television? Was it while you were having your devotion, reading the scriptures, and you had an enlightened and transcendent experience? Or was it at the table of the Lord? Amidst the rustling waters of baptism or at a dedication service 
Was it at a memorial for a loved one? How long has it been since your heart burned within you? This Easter, our prayer to our Father is not so much that our borders in our territory may be open. It's not so much that we may have more money in our coffers. It's not so much that we may get the long hope for job or that our children may be able to go back to school. The one thing that matters to us more than everything else is our salvation. For Jesus reminds us it is possible to have the whole world and lose our soul. Let us pray today for that warm heart, that warm heart experience. Let us pray that Christ will come within our hearts. And that as he spoke with Cleopas and Annas, that we too may have in his presence that burning experience, even as we break bread in our homes today, this Easter tide. So may the Lord bless us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
let us affirm our faith in the new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make us new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Prayers of the people. Lord Jesus Christ, today we greet you, risen from the dead, victorious over sin and death, over suffering and shame, over all evil and wrong. Keep us mindful of those who labor under these burdens this day and grant them your peace and comfort. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus Christ, we greet you, risen from the dead, overcoming by the power of love, by patient trust and perseverance, by faith in God alone. Grant that we all your people may have your heart and your mind among them, and help us and them to minister to one another and to your world in your name we pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus Christ, we greet you, risen from the dead, proving that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Grant that your most holy church and the people of this congregation may show forth the truth of reconciliation and draw all people unto you and the peace you offer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus Christ, we greet you, risen from the dead, all living hope and all power for each day. We pray, O God, that you might grant hope and pour out your power upon those we name before you now, and we intercede in the silence of our minds and hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. And let our prayers come to you with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
Christ will come again. Christ will come again. Hallelujah. 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 We remember, oh Father, in accordance with his command, how oh Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying to them, Take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took a cup, and again he gave you thanks and praise, and then gave the cup to his disciples. And he said to them, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Worthy is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain, to receive all power and wealth, wisdom and might, honor and glory and praise. Lord, Lord by, by your cross and resurrection, resurrection you have set us free. You, you are the Savior the of the world. world. Loving God, send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that the bread we break may be for us the communion of his body and the cup of blessing which we bless may be for us the communion of his blood that being built up in love we may be strengthened in the unity of faith and come to the fullness of the stature of Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now as you are in your home to take then the bread and take then the cup that we shall eat and drink. You who truly and sincerely repent of your sins, are in love and charity with your neighbors, and have resolved to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and by the power of the Spirit, walking in his holy ways, take now the bread and wine with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you and his blood, which was shed for you, and feed on him in your heart and in faith. Give him thanks. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you in eternal life. I take and I eat in remembrance of Christ, body was broken for me, and I feed on him in my heart and in faith. Amen. Blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for me, Keep me into eternal life. I drink in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for me. And I am thankful. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have nourished us with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fill us with your spirit and make us one in peace and love. And so we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all mankind. Amen. Amen.
May it be that when our days here are ended, we too may enter into your fullness. Grateful for the life we had, having lived faithfully, honestly, and with love in our hearts. Together, we look forward to the moment when Christ will say to us, come and see. Let's pray. Now go in peace, love, and care for one another in the name of Christ. And the blessing of the ever-present God be upon you. The power of the risen Christ be within you. And the wisdom and gentleness of the Holy Spirit surround you and guide you both now and forevermore. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we now go forth into the world to fulfill our calling as the people of God, the body of Christ. Amen. Our prayers of intercession on this festival of the Resurrection Day. Let us pray. God of life and love, in the transforming light of the Easter message and its certain hope, that one day your kingdom of justice, love, and joy shall fully come, we offer to you our prayers for others. In the light of the empty tomb, we bring to you a world remembering before you all victims of war, violence, and oppression. We pray for justice, for equity, for the cessation of violence in places and people torn apart by war and conflict. We stand in solidarity of the people of the earth who are living with the scourge of COVID-19 and its impact on areas of life. We pray for the continued movement of immigrants and the people seeking for refuge. Lord, tear open the heavens that your rain may pour into our world and bring peace. We pray for those who suffer crushing poverty and hunger, struggling to find adequate food for their families and for themselves. We pray especially for children everywhere who find themselves caught up in dark and dangerous situations, which leave them frightened and confused. Strengthen and guide all those who give sacrificially of their time, their skills, their very selves, to bring relief to those in need of it. Let the light of the risen Christ shine in our world today. As we remember our nations, their leaders and people before you, we pray particularly for our own. We pray for our territory and political leaders, for the governor and all members of his staff, for the premier and all members of cabinet, for all members of the legislature and the government services. Give to them penitence, an understanding heart, a wisdom shaped by your vision. We pray for all the men and women of our security force, the judiciary and civil society. Let the light of the risen Christ shine in our territory. We pray for the Church of Christ in this and in every land. Come, Holy Spirit, to us all in the resurrection power. Forgive and heal our division and conflicts and bind us together in the truth and love of the gospel so that our Savior's prayer will be answered, and the world come to believe the message we proclaim. Bless our church, the Methodist Church, and every branch of connection throughout the Caribbean and the Americas and Europe. We pray for our connectional bishop, the Reverend Everard Gil Galbraith, our district bishop, the Reverend Charles Seaton, and the other seven district bishops. For all circuit superintendents, especially Reverend Dr. Pete Lewis, for all presbyters, especially Reverend Elkana Brian Seymour. For all deacons, especially Reverend Selena Walton Charles and Yvonne Nips Flores. Commission lay workers and lay preachers. All circuit, congregational, and care fund stewards. Class leaders, 
leaders of organizations, commissioners, and custodians. We pray for all who are faithfully ministering in the various organizations and ministries of the church as they contribute to the building the kingdom of Christ. As followers of Christ in this circuit and here in this congregation, we pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the ecumenical church. We pray that you will call forth new spiritual leaders with humility, vision, and deep devotion. Women and men of vision, filled with your spirit, dreaming your dreams, eager to follow the living Christ without safety or certainty, but with a thirst and hunger for the holy, for the mystery at the center of all life that entwines all humanity and all people of race, gender, nationalities, and faiths. Inflame each one of us here in this worship today so that we may hear the words of Jesus, peace be with you. Let us witness a new day of the exalted and gracious power of our risen Lord. Let the light of the risen Christ shine in the church beyond today. We pray for all the people around us who are in real need and all who suffer. We remember the lonely, the frightened, the abandoned and sorrowful. Call them by name as you did Mary by the empty tomb and let them also find in you peace and joy. We pray you to heal those who are troubled in mind, body and spirit. Bring relief to those who are deeply stressed and see no way out from under their burden. Let the light of the risen Christ illuminate every heart and life. Risen Lord Jesus, accompany us all as we walk into the week ahead. May we walk closely your footsteps and rejoice in your presence. Make us strong to bear witness to your loving Lordship. And may we so live as your resurrection people, that we may be channels of your grace and peace to all we encounter on the journey. Let the light of the risen Christ always shine upon our path. Bless us in our calling. Strengthen us in all that we can do to make a difference in this community. Graciously hear our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, we give thanks for those whom we have not known but who are now in your narrow presence. May we know them to be blessed, made whole in the mystery of life before beyond this life. May it be that when our days here are ended, we too may enter your fullness, grateful for the life we had, having lived faithfully, honestly, and with love in our hearts. We look forward to the moment when Christ will say to us, come and see. And so we chant the prayer of your church with one voice, the Lord's Prayer.
for today and during the course of this week. Everyone is being informed of the cancellation of the Easter Sunday services and all other fellowship activities associated with the church as the chapels remain closed through to Monday, April 5th, 2021. Out of an abundance of caution for everyone's health and safety, all services will instead be aired on YouTube and ZBVI radio station. For more information, please contact the church office on 340-1857. On Sunday, April 11, 2021, our services at all congregations. And I gather at 11 a.m., the preacher will be Sister Lorna George. Bellevue at 7 a.m., the preacher there will be Reverend Selena Walton Charles. At Cane Garden Bay, 10 a.m., the preacher will be Brother Isaac Spann. At Carrot Bay at 9 a.m., Sister Juliet Foy. At East End, 9 a.m., Brother Everton Henry. Just Van Dyke at 11 a.m., Brother Malvin Barry. Long Look at 10 a.m., Sister Adina Penn. At North Sound at 11, we will have Reverend Dr. Keith B. Lewis, at Purcell, 9.30 a.m., Sister Darlene Parsons. At Rowtown, 9.30 a.m., Reverend Selena Walton Charles. At Seacouse Bay, at 9 a.m., Brother Robert Wright. And the Valley, 9 a.m., Reverend Dr. Keith B. Lewis. And then at Zion, at 11, we will have Brother Vaughn Foy. Circuit meetings continues on Saturday, April 10th at 9 a.m. We will have a Zoom meeting for the Circuit Organizational and Educational Committee. Then on that later in the afternoon at 3.30 p.m., the Circuit Preachers Meeting will be held at the Rowtown Methodist Church. On Sunday the 11th, 4 p.m. at the Rotown Methodist Church, we will have the Circuit Pastoral Council meeting. And on April 14th, which is Wednesday at 6 p.m. at the Rotown Methodist Church Hall, we will have the Circuit Resources and Development Committee meeting. This meeting is hybrid and will also be done on Zoom. This is all your notices for the week.
Now go in peace, love, and care for one another in the name of Christ. And the blessing of the ever-present God be upon you. The power of the risen Christ be within you. And the wisdom and gentleness of the Holy Spirit surround you and guide you both now and forevermore. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we now go forth into the world to fulfill our calling as the people of God, the body of Christ. Amen.